Um, today, we are speaking, continuing to look at our third week now, oh, third verse in Philippians chapter 2, which is, Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as one more important than yourselves. Um, today, I want us to continue focusing on humility. You didn't miss the part where it says, don't do things out of selfishness or empty conceit. You know what empty, empty conceit means? Being full of yourself. The, the, the way that the world trains us. You know, self-assertive. Just go get it and just do whatever it takes to get the job done. No matter what the consequence. Or, you know, that's just hot air in front of God. He wants humility. He wants you for real. You know, he can fool me, I can fool you, we can fool others, but we don't fool God. He knows the truth. What's in there? What's governing me? What's my driving motivation? What's pushing me? What's propelling me? Why am I here today? What's the reason? Is it to honor God, to follow after Him, or is it something else? We are told to judge ourselves in the scriptures. Check to see if we are truly in the faith. Markers of a faithful life is clear. Even though it's not a list of do's and don'ts in the way of a legalist, but a believer's life should portray no adultery. Jesus said, do not even look on a woman Forget about sleeping around with somebody who is not your wife. Jesus said, do not even look on a woman and lust for her. If you did, you did commit adultery. That's adultery. We are told, do not commit murder. And Jesus said, if you get angry with your brother, you committed murder. Check ourselves. We are not to lie. Lie doesn't mean only in big things. It also means in little things. Exaggeration is a lie. Marketing yourself in a certain way is a lie. Be who you are. Don't try to be seem a, a certain way. That's lying. That's not being truthful. In this world, we, we call it being a salesman. No. Not if you're a believer. Your yes is yes, your no is no, whatever is true is true. So, believer's life should portray some of these characteristics. Believer's life, a believer should be peaceful, not constantly quarreling and fighting and pushing and pulling. And, no, you, if you're a believer, there needs to be a certain rest in your life, certain peace in your life. That's one of the fruits of a belief. Even though we all fall and get up and struggle with all these issues, but our direction needs to be always for the better. We can't live in this way. I don't know why I went there, but coming back to our issue of humility is one of the... Uh, they asked uh, Augustine, a first century saint, right? They said, one of the church fathers, they said, what is the first precept of Christian religion? They wanted to know. He said, I'll tell you, that's easy. The first, the second, the third is all the same. Humility. It started with humility. The first sin in the Garden of Eden was what? Disobedience. Obedience. That comes from pride. First sin in all of creation in the heavens was what? Pride. pride. 
We are told to be not prideful, not portraying ourselves a certain way. This goes contrary to everything we have learned in the world, in our school systems, in, in business, in, in families. In, but this is not God's way. This is not what He wants for us. This is not the best life God has for us. Only if we were to just stop struggling with Him and say, Lord, let Your will be done. Are you willing to be humble like that and surrender to Him fully? Let Him decide what your life's course is going to be rather than dictating to Him, this is what you want. Humility. Someone has described humility as following. Humility is insight into one's own insignificance. Insight into your own insignificance. It is the mindset of a person who is not conceited, but who has the right attitude towards himself. Question, do you have the right attitude about yourself? <laughs> who do you think you are, <laughs> is the question. Do you have the right understanding of yourself? What is the scriptural understanding of oneself? Abraham is a good example to look at. Look what he thinks of himself. And Abraham replied, now you know who Abraham is, right? He is called the grandfather of faith. Right? All the monotheistic religions of the world point to this one person, Abraham. Every monotheistic person says, we are Abraham's children. Look what he thought of himself. Now behold, he's praying now. This is Abraham praying. Now behold, I have ventured to speak to the Lord. Although I am but dust and ashes. Guys, this should be our understanding of ourselves. We are nothing. We are dust and ashes. What do they say when you, what do we say when we're burying somebody? Repeat that uh, verse. From dust to dust. Scripture says your lives are as, as, as a vapor that, that, that is only on earth for like half a millisecond. You've seen vapor come out of a kettle? How long does it stick around? Not too long. Scripture says, God says, that's your life. In light of eternity, in light of who God is, that's my life. God. I'm ash, I'm dirt, nothing. Because he, God made us from ashes. But he has given us this wonderful capacity. It's called the image of God. We have will, emotion, intellect. That sets you apart from all the rest of the creation. Capacity to love. Understand. Seek Him. Animals don't have this. Plant life does not have this. You do. I do. Why? Because these are the image, image. This is the image of God. To understand morality. Where do you think the source of morality is? It's God. He's given us this capacity. Not to serve ourselves. He's given us this capacity to understand that he made us, and unless He gives us something, we have nothing. What do you have, the scripture says, that you haven't been given? Ability to do, see, hear, eat, enjoy, think, walk, work, produce, sit, stand, buy, sell, whatever. You fill in the blank. What do you have that you haven't been given? Right? That's what scriptures tell us. And then it follows by, 
Why do you boast as though you do? Why do you act like it's all you? It's none of us, guys. If you don't remember anything today, from today, remember this. It's none of us, all of God. Everything we have, ability, characteristic, attribute, you name it. Physical, intellectual, emotional, psychological, any gifting you might have, any attribute you might have, it all comes from God. All of it. If you're a good salesman, good teacher, good jeweler, good mom, good, it's all from God. It's all from God. None of you, all of Him. Abraham had the right understanding of himself. You want me to read a list of the humble people that the scriptures mention? One, of course, come on, this is classic, you all know. Who's, who's the perfect example of humility? Yes, yes. Who said that? Who said that? Five points for you. We're going to go chronologically. Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, Gideon, David, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Josiah, Job, Isaiah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, even the centurion, woman of Cana, Elizabeth, Peter, Luke, pretty much everybody that's mentioned in the scripture. Humility goes hand in hand with faith. Humility has to go hand in hand with a believer's life. All those things that I listed earlier, well, this goes on number one. How do you know, they asked Jesus, if somebody is coming from you? He said, you will know a tree by its fruit. How does anybody know that you're a believer? Well, they're going to look at your life. Believe it or not, you can fool people by your talking for a little bit. But after a while, people will figure it out. They won't say anything to your face, but they'll know on the inside that it's all a show, it's a game, it's this or that or whatever. Instead of wanting to be with you, they'll start appeasing you and or tolerating you. So put all that aside. All these people had this one great attribute that was humility. When Jesus said, you will know a tree by its fruit, one of the first fruit is humility. So, when we're checking ourselves to see if we are in the faith, first question, am I humble? And if your answer is yes, you're lost because you're not. The moment you say to yourself, I'm humble, guess what? You're not. You're done. Once you realize, oh, look how humble I am, it's finished. Humility is what is expected from us. In my career, we told, he has told you, O oh man of God, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? This is what the Lord requires of us, believers. To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before your God. This is what God wants. To walk humbly. Understanding the right idea of your right opinion of yourself. In Romans, we're told that don't think of yourself so highly of others. In a lot of cultures, thinking less of yourself is not a positive thing. Everybody's an expert on every single level. You can never teach anybody anything. Everybody's trying to teach you something. Because they're presupposition is they know better than you how to cook how to clean how to drive 
Well, some people need to know how to try, but <laughs> how, how to make lama <laughs> how, how to raise your children, how to teach, how to speak, whatever it is. People are constantly telling you stuff. And if their motivation is one of, well, you don't know, let me teach you. Well, you know what? You're just walking in sin. That's pride. That's not humility. That's empty conceit. It's not humility. Proverb says, even a fool seems wise when he doesn't speak. We're told, be slow to speak, but quick to listen. Listen. Don't always try to teach everybody everything all the time. Listen. God might be trying to tell you something. Get out of the salesman mode. You don't have to sell yourself. If you worry more about what other people think about you than what God knows about you, you're in slippery slope. You're going to fall on your face. Because at that moment, you're making other people's opinion God in your life. Did you follow me? This is huge. Don't miss this. If you worry more about what others think about you, if the opinion of others dictate what you are doing or saying or who you are being rather than God's knowledge, you are in very dangerous waters. You have, at that point, you make God your enemy. Because if you're his child, he's going to discipline you. He is not going to let you be in that prideful mode. And he's, he says, I don't share my glory with anybody. So, you're taking God's glory and giving it to others. You're saying, what God knows about me is not that important, but what he or she or they think about me is more important. That's blasphemy. Serious stuff. You see, insight into why we do what we do is very important. These seem insignificant at a glance, but these are fundamental, foundational issues of the Christian life. Constantly judging your own motives. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Is it to please others? Is it to be seen a certain way? Is this true? Why am I portraying myself that way? Is this true about me? Because I told you before, you can't fool anybody. You can try to portray yourself a certain way. The truth always comes out. And most people know. And that they won't say it to your face. They'll know you're fake. Not real. We all see people like that. They're bitter in person, but in their persona, they're like, ah. And what do you do? You stay away from those people. One last point I want to make. It's a warning. If you and I are not walking in humility, we are about to fall. Pride comes before the fall. Why? God doesn't want His children to be prideful. He wants us to be humble. So, what does He do? He brings calamity in your life. Many examples. Um, I have a couple here. In Leviticus 26. Now this is God speaking. I also was acting with hostility against them. Who? His people, his children. To bring them into the land of their enemies. God is saying, I took my children and made them slaves to their enemies. 
Why would a loving God do this? Why would he do that? Because their hearts were uncircumcised and they had to be humbled. You know what it means to have an uncircumcised heart? That means it's calloused. God is not able to penetrate. They're just so conceited and full of themselves and their opinion of themselves. They put themselves or what they think on a pedestal. And they look down to everybody else. At that point, be careful. If you're truly a child of God, you have discipline coming your way. Why go through that? Just check yourself every day. Check your purposes. Look, God wants us to have the best of everything. He wants to give us a peaceful life. Jesus said, I've come so that you will have life and have it to the full. Have it more abundantly. That's his goal. He wants us to have a peaceful, a joyful, a restful life. And his scripture warns us. Look, all these things can happen to you. But why? You don't have to go through that. Just humble yourself. So, let's try this week to live in humility. To check ourselves. Why we do what we do. Check yourself. Are you truly a believer? First. Ask yourself that. And then. Check your motivations. Purposes. What's driving you? Like I always say, you're probably sick of hearing me say it. Why do you do what you do is more important to God than what you do. You could be helping this great community. You could make a huge difference in their lives. Whether it's one person or ten people or a thousand people. You could spend everything you have. Work 24-7, sleeplessly, tirelessly. Work yourself to the bone. And give everything to make their lives better. But if your purpose is not correct, it's a waste of time. Why you do what you do. Even in sharing the gospel with others. If your purpose is not God's glory, or something selfish, or so you want to be seen a certain way, or what, what, or trying to prove something to somebody. That's not the right motivation. What did Jesus say? He said, "Take my yoke. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. I am humble and gentle in spirit. That's what He wants." Just like he was humble and gentle. So we have to be that way. Humble, gentle. Being okay with whatever he brings our path. Knowing that he's in control, he's sovereign, and he knows the best. With this one more thing, I'm going to close. This week. I pray. You will ask yourself. I pray that the Holy Spirit will just nudge you and just disturb you to a point to find out why you do what you do. I pray that God will give you that insight, that ability to understand why you do what you do. So that if there is any filth in there, you can remove it. And for the first time maybe in your lives, experience true peace. Because until that root of pride is not moved, you have not experienced peace. I pray that God will do that this week in your life.